Okay, friends and neighbors, DK here with Mr. V Amps, and we have a Galleon Kruger 800 RB. All right, um, we have an input with a minus 10 dB button for you know probably active passive uh, volume, which I think is like a gain volume. Low cut, mid contour, which mid contour looks to me like a mid cut, like a scoop. High boost. Uh, treble, middle, low middle, and bass, which sounds appropriate. This is a bass amplifier, if you didn't guess. And then there's a boost with a foot switch, so I'm guessing that boost with a foot switch is like a foot switch where you can kick it on and play a solo or something. Um, crossover for being in biamp mode, there's biamp or, or not, uh, mono or biamped. Uh, high master and low master, which would be your separate master volumes if you have, you know, biamped, I suppose. So, this just got here from the auction. It appears to be in really good condition. Somebody put this in what I believe is a do-it-yourself uh, road case, which has some dings and dents on the paint job. Um, the road case, like I say, I think it's a DIY. It's I think it's older than the amplifier is. Um, there's an effects loop that somebody put a piece of tape over. Let me drop you down, maybe you can see inside of okay, it. Okay, so over in the corner here, there's an effects loop in and out that somebody covered with a piece of electrical tape, which, uh, I mean, granted, speakers go there. Um, three, 300 watts on the low and 100 watts on the high. Um, kind of makes sense. And then there's an XLR out up there. I guess it would go to a mixer board. Mm, there it is. Now you can see it. So they covered the effects loop. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that was just because, you know, dude it cared. And we're going to come over here. Uh, no power cord with this one, but it takes a standard IEC. It is marked as 7 amps. And... There's a fuse in there that's supposed to be seven amps. So let's see if it's seven amps. That's a that's a cool looking fuse. Look at them lightning bolty kind of decorations. Can you see that? That's a cool looking fuse. Let's see if this is actually seven amps. It is. All right. So we're already off to a good start. I have no idea if this works, if it's going to explode, if it's going to catch fire, if something bad is going to happen, or something great is going to happen. But uh, you never know until you plug it in. So let's plug it in and hook a speaker up to it and see if it blows up. I got electricity. Okay, sacrificial speakers hooked up just in case it decides to explode. In three, two, one. Okay, that's not good that's like really not good there's a lot of buzzy hummy not good sounds like there's DC sounds like there's DC pouring out of the one end of this not good not good at all okay so I put it in biamp mode and plugged in on the high side because I don't hear any remnants of horrible things happening on the high side so let's see if the high side wants to work all right Oh yeah. So 100 watts on the high side. Preamp circuit seems okay other than dirty pots. Boost circuit definitely works, it's on. And the high master volume works. So I suspect there might be some DC so, I mean, in general, this thing wants to work, at least the high side. But on the, the low side, I think there might be some uh, some DC on there. So let's check. Okay, sorry, I'm holding the probes, but uh, the meter says, no, there is not DC there. Um, if I twiddle the volume knob around, I got a little bit to show up. But, I mean, we're talking like, uh, yeah, like, you know, six hundredths of an amp or volt, six hundredths of a volt. So, not a lot there. So why did the low side make such an ugly humming noise with my speaker? That's a good question. I'd like to know that. Hmm. 
Okay, so now it's not doing it, but I've got rustling leaves here on this power, or on the low, the low volume here, I've got rustling leaves, and if that wiper on that pot was losing contact, it can throw the whole thing out of balance. Solid state amps are all a balancing act, so I think we're in okay shape. We are going to pull the, this out of its box, pull the lid off of it, and clean all the pots and uh, see how it works. But it looks like we did get a winner here. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But uh, in this case, I think, we, I think we did win. I don't think this amp wants me dead. So that's good. Okay, so that's funny. When I take it out of the uh, box, it appears a lot smaller. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's not this kind of a shallow amp. I'm impressed that you know they packed 400 watts of power into a pretty compact space. So. And it looks like it looks like they had general maintenance in mind with the way they did the box design. So hopefully, I won't be screaming about how hard it is to get to the pots when we get this lid off. I don't know. Do any of the other amp techs scream and get mad that I use electric screwdrivers? I know one of the guitar technicians was caught using power tools and a bunch of people reamed him a new one, but then again, his channel has a lot more viewers than mine does, but eh, that's no never mind. I'm not taking any of the uh, Google's money so I can do what I want for the most part. I don't have to worry about it. it. Helps if you take all the screws out before you take the lid off. Come on. There we go. Okay, and alright. Wow, that's a lot of big capacitors. Usually you see a couple of monster, monster capacitors. That's got a lot of um, I mean those are all a thousand thousand mics, so thousand, 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 and then these are, what are these? These are 470, so 470, four 470s, four and one, two, three, six, one thousands. Okay, Japanese capacitators, these are our driver transistors up here, and we have our little ones, we got little ones going into bigger ones on the heat sink, big old bridge rectifier, Looks like another bridge rectifier. Big honking power transformer. Yeah, this is this is an older amp. This might be, I think this is 80s. Kind of reminds me, not, not in necessary construction, but the same sort of stuff that I do see in some of the better units. And it looks like good switchcraft jacks there. Uh, One-sided PC board, which is not bad. Um, that's interesting. I would have expected a more PV-esque um, kind of thing where they put the power transformers on the or the power transistors on the back and then they uh, uh, you know put them on the back on the heatsink but if you can see these are on a plate that L brackets to the heatsink so that actually might make it easier to take apart and put together so whoever you know they were thinking about when they put this together as the potential maintenance technician uh, they must have liked them. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, let's clean all the pots, uh, you know, and I'll give it a good visual inspection for any explosions. Uh, we do not have DC on it. I think we just had a, a dirty fuzzy switch and, uh, you know, uh, again, we'll triple, quadruple check it. But I think, I think we got a good, we got a good healthy amp. It just needs a bath. These are very interesting uh, pots. It looks like there's a center hole in the back there where the lubricant goes in and uh, that would actually assist in making them easier to maintain and I love how all the switches are mounted topside here um, this these amps have are kind of they have a reputation as like one of the benchmark industry standard kind of amplifiers you know that they're just a good reliable kind of amplifier and I think I can see why because they're very easy to maintain. Somebody with very elemental electronics knowledge who can spray this in the pots every once in a while. That is Max Pro elect electrical lubricant. We have that and we have Max Pro contact cleaner. Both available from my Reverb store. Support me, not some other guy's Amazon link, you big wiener. 
but uh, yeah so a little bit of, a little bit of juice in the pots and in the switches uh, we're gonna work those over and we'll wipe it down and then we'll give it a final test but uh, I think this thing is going to be good with a bath uh, everything looks healthy all the caps look healthy it doesn't hum uh, I think the only reason it was giving me the weird buzzy on my speaker was because of poor connection um, so we'll get all of that resolved and thoroughly test it and then we can find it a new home yay okay so all the switches are cleaned and all the pots are cleaned and now it, it will need to be dust busted but beyond that we should be ready to play so I got our masters down I should have it out of biamping mode flip it on okay all right input and of course there's nothing because I don't have these up High master doesn't do anything, so apparently low master is the uh, thing. But low master was a problem before, because it was crispy critter. Cleaning it has solved that. No crispy critter there. Um, crossover works for sure. That's cool. Take it back out of bi amp mode there. Boost is okay. Clean. Base pot's quiet. Low middle is quiet. High middle. Good. Yeah, I got one tick. One tick, come on. You, you, you put the cleaner in here and you turn them like 25, 30 times and you, you always like find that one spot. Come on, Nelly. Seems like it's only when I go fast. Where is that spot? It's only if I go fast. And it's going away the more I do this, so. We'll put another shot of cleaner in that one. Treble's good. Turn down our master a little bit and then our gain. It's good, our minus 10 dB switch. That's funny, see if I just have my finger on the tip but I have my thumbs on ground, I get a little bit of sound. If I take my thumbs off the of ground, the impedance to ground goes way low and all the signal hits the amp and I get tons of sound. Okay, low cut's good, mid cut's good, high boost is good. Okay, I think we're cool. Because she's not humming anymore. Just need to weed out that little bit of a scratch in that high middle pot. It's the only pot that's got any issue is that one right there. I like the way this amp is made. I mean, I can see why it was durable. They used good quality. Oh, good morning. Yeah, there's definitely a there's definitely some noise in that one pot. We're going to thoroughly clean that. But uh, I like that they used, you know, good quality switchcraft jacks. And the way that this thing is built, you know, stuff like the input jack that always gets stepped on or messed up, it's, it's built that it can handle traveling. So good design, GK. You guys did a good job. Okay, so another shot of contact cleaner has cleaned up the click in our high middle pot. Doesn't do that at all anymore. So, that's, that's about it. I can't find any other faults on this amplificator. Yay! We'll put the lid on, clean the dirt off of it, maybe put it back in its magic box, and uh, <clears throat> get ready to uh, find it a new home. Cool. Okay, so here's our little demonstration of it working. Remember, this is more so about how well the amp works and not about my non-amazing bass skills. And there's drums right behind me. There's drums right over there, so I gotta try to stay out of the shot here. But uh, we've got our base, and I do. I have a 10, a 410 cabinet on the top, and I've got a single 15 on the bottom. I can run their volume separately. So here's just the 15.
is in bi amp mode. If I click that off, it will still feed, you know, the 100 to the top and 300 to the bottom, but the crossover gets kicked out of the network. So this is the crossover between the two. That's working properly. And there's our boost, which is on because there's no pedal in there to turn it off. And then we have our four band EQ treble, which is probably not high enough for what I got here. clean, healthy, all is well. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.